Hi, my name's Kevin Hicks. Welcome to my YouTube channel, The History Squad. Now, today's video is about a character I've been fascinated with for years, the executioner, Jack Ketch, which, in my opinion, is one of the most bloodthirsty public servants that England has ever had. So, Jack Ketch, appointed as public executioner, 1663. He was a public servant, he paid to do the job. We know very little about his early life. We know he was married. Uh, we also know his wife, I think, regarded him as a bit of a bungling idiot, but that's between those two. He was famous as the hangman for the Tyburn Triple Tree, and that could hang dozens of people at once. But he appeared to play to the crowd. The more I read about him, the more I think to myself, this, this guy was a showman, a sadist, or was he just a simpleton playing to the crowd? However, his victims could be made to suffer. You didn't have a long drop on the Tyburn tree and then snap. This is what Ketch used to do. You will have already come the distance from Newgate Prison in London to the outskirts to the triple tree, Tyburn. The rope will be tied up to the beam, put round your neck, tightened. This is the knot they used, yeah, but a much thicker rope. This is just for you to see. You would then be stood on the edge of a cart, a horse and cart, nothing else, no long drop, and the cart would simply be pulled away and you will swing off it and you will choke to death. He could make you dance, dangle. And people had this love-hate relationship with Jack Ketch. You know, was he this evil man? Was he sadistic or was he just giving everybody, you know, <laughs> a performance for their money? It's awful to think, isn't it? Because he was playing with life and death. Well, this got into the psyche of the Londoners. So much so that the Punch and Judy shows that used to be around, they changed the villain. Punchinello used to beat the devil, but they changed it. He beat Jack Ketch. He used to beat him with a slap and a stick, where they get the saying slapstick for slapstick comedy. But there's actually an image showing Punchinello, Punch and Judy, hanging Jack Ketch and showing him how to hang someone correctly. Now, Jack Ketch, already notorious as a hangman, on the 21st of July, 1683, he becomes an axeman. This is the execution of Lord Russell. Uh, it was part of uh, a plot to assassinate both Charles II and James II. This is uh, quite a period of history, becomes the Monmouth Rebellion. Well, Lord Russell, he is found guilty of treason. There's this whole plot around him. Jack Ketch is simply told, you're going to have to cut off his head. He'd never wielded an axe before in his life. And poor Lord Russell can smell beer, ale on the breath of Ketch. He's nervous. So he gives him 10 guineas and asks him to do a good job. He then kneels down. And what happens now? He's actually awful. The first blow misses the head and the neck completely, but splits the shoulder. Can you imagine the agony of having an axe woof straight through your shoulder? He then pulls it out. Now I know from experience using an axe, not on somebody's head, but once it's in the ground, it's in the wood or it's in a piece of meat, you've got to really pull it back. He then brings the axe down again, misses the head, misses the neck, but almost severs Lord Russell's ear. He must have been in agony. There must have been blood all over the place. Lord Russell turns his head to Ketch and calls him, you dog. Ketch then brings the axe down again and again. So many times, nobody can tell you exactly how many times he brought the axe down upon the head. He fails to sever it with the axe. He tries to give up, but the sheriff tells him, get on with the job, you dog. He then uses one of these, a short saw, to finish off the job. He holds up the head. The public are absolutely going berserk. This was terrible. But hey, he did the job. And what it becomes now is the executioner, the hangman, the axeman. 
for the bloody assizes, Judge Jeffries, over the Monmouth Rebellion. And this is interesting because I have possibly a personal connection to this, Dr. John Hicks. He was executed, I understand, at Glastonbury in the West Country there, home drawn and quartered by Ketch. So, Jack Ketch's fame is assured. The execution of poor Lord Russell, people can remember it. So, two years later, July 1685, the execution of the Duke of Monmouth for his part in the Monmouth Rebellion on Tower Hill there, the crowd are gathering. They want to see another show, another famous gentry is going to be executed. But this is so important that there is a circle of guards around the execution block. The crowd presses in and Jack Ketch is there. Now, the Duke of Monmouth turns to Jack Ketch and says, here are six guineas. Don't hack me like you did my friend Lord Russell. My servant has more gold for you if you do a good job. So the Duke of Monmouth bows his head to the block, kneels down, places his head over the block. The first blow didn't hit the neck squarely. Neither did the second. This man, the Duke of Monmouth, must have been in agony, blood spurting everywhere. Now, Scuffles break out in the crowd. There is going to be trouble. The guards have to turn away from the execution to put down people, push them back. They say it took five blows to actually sever the head. Now Jack Ketcher struck again. He will now have to be escorted from the scene by armed guards. So angry were the crowd. So this business with Jack Ketch is interesting, isn't it? You know, this, the execution of the Duke of Monmouth, if he'd have done it right, if he'd have severed the head one, maybe two blows, he'd have had an extra bag of gold. So it begs the question, doesn't it? Uh, was he bribed, ordered by the king to make these executions as violent and painful as possible? Or did he just not care about the money? Did he hate the aristocracy? Or was he a bit of a bumbling fool like his wife thought. Let's have your opinion. Let me know in the comments section what you think about Jack Ketch, the infamous executioner. So we have a bit of an insight into what Ketch may have really been like. Uh, it talks about uh, Ketch's kitchen, which was the place where he took the severed heads and the quartered bodies to be prepared for public display. And we have an eyewitness account, Thomas Elwood, who was a friend of John Milton, the poet, who was in um, prison, in Newgate prison, for uh, something he'd done. He was a religious reformist. And he bore witness to Jack Ketch bringing in the severed heads of some of the victims. And this is what he had to say. When they were brought up to be boiled, the hangman fetched them in a dusty, dirty basket out of some place and setting them down among the felons he then made sport with them they took them by the hair flouting jeering and laughing at them and then giving them some ill names box them on the ears and cheeks which done the hangman put them in his kettle and parboiled them with bay salt and cumin seed that to keep from putrefication and this to keep off the fowls from seizing on them. The whole sight, as well as that of the bloody quarters first as this of the heads afterwards, was both frightening and loathsome and begat an abhorrence in my nature. So I'll just clarify this. Basically then, Thomas Elwood witnesses catch bringing the heads of the victims. I've got one here. Of course I have. But then amongst the felons, the other prisoners, they make fun. They slap them, hold them by the hair, give them names before he boils them. Now they're boiled with um, bay salt that preserves the body so they won't putrefy because the public previously had complained how they quarters and, and heads stank the places out. And then there is the, the cumin, which actually keeps um, the birds from pecking these things to pieces. They don't like it, apparently. 
So Jack Kett, he would play with the heads. He would have sport with them. So was he a sadist? 23 years reign as the public executioner. It finished in uh, 1686. He actually died in the December. But earlier on in the year, he got into trouble. And he was put into Bridewell Prison for insulting the sheriff. Now, his replacement, Pasha Rose, who was a butcher by trade, wasn't in office for very long because he himself was hanged for burglary. So they had to fetch Jack Ketch out of prison, but he didn't last long. December of that year, he died. His legacy, for the next 200 years at least, every executioner in England, possibly Britain, will be known as Jack Ketch. So I hope you enjoyed our little video there. If you did, don't forget, like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to turn on the notification button so you know when there's a new video coming through. But now I must give a shout out to two of my patrons there. We've got Sean Kihan and Ryan Partington. I did Tonic uh, the first time the other day with my patrons. We had a Zoom hangout and uh, I'm determined to do some more of these. Uh, we had uh, some fun, really did, and it was great to see the faces. But for now, thank you very much.